Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter number 1. This is Luke, the beloved physician, as he writes the book of Acts. He wrote the gospel of Luke. Now he's writing the book of Acts. And he is addressing a man by the name of Theophilus. And notice what he says. The former treaties have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach, until the day in which he was taken up, after that he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God, and being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, Ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Not many days hence. And when they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? And he said to them, It is not for you to know the times of the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. But note carefully, but ye shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Amen. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. Amen. On occasion, angels speak in the Bible, and here they say, And while they were looking, while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee... Why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen Him go into heaven. Father, in Jesus' name now, let me preach what you put on my heart. In thy holy name we pray. And amen. You can be seated. The book of Acts is what we call a transition book because it refers to a transition period. There are quite a few transitions throughout the Scriptures. When the Lord Jesus Christ went to that cross and He died, the disciples and all of His believers, no doubt, were left in one of the lowest states in their life. They had just witnessed the death of their Lord and their God. He had worked many, many miracles while in the flesh on this earth, even to raising the dead. They firmly believed in Him as much as they could understand Him to be who He was. But there was much more they needed to know about the Lord Jesus Christ. And there is much more to understand, and they needed to understand this, about the ministry of the Son of God. The Lord Jesus Christ had an earthly ministry that He fulfilled. He brought it to its fruition when He gave Himself at Calvary and said, Father, it is finished. That finished the earthly ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. When He arose from the dead, the disciples witnessed His resurrection. But there was something lacking, even though they knew He was alive, even though they could tell others He was alive, there was something more that they needed than simply a witness to the resurrection of Christ. There was more that was needed in their testimony and in the church itself. For 40 days He was here upon this earth. And what you just read about in the book of Acts chapter number 1 is the literal historical record of the ascension of the Lord Jesus Christ. He ascended because earth could not hold Him. He ascended because heaven awaited Him. He ascended because He was a righteous one. The only righteous one of His kind that existed in the universe. There was not another righteous one like Him. For He was a sinless, perfect man that had now fulfilled His ministry upon this earth and now a man was about to sit down in glory. At the right hand of the Father now there is a man 
That man is the mediator between God and men. That man is the door to heaven. That man is the second man, last Adam. That man is the one who takes your prayers and ministers and has for 2,000 years. Here in the book of Acts chapter number 1, the disciples no doubt were excited. When they witnessed Him ascending up into heaven, I'm sure they said within themselves, My, my, what manner of man is this? For none had ever done that before. Out He went into the heavens. And they opened their arms and they received Him with joy because the Son of Man had now ascended into eternity, into the third heaven, into the Holy of Holies, into the very presence of God Himself. Only one would ever dare approach God and come to His right hand, but the Lord Jesus Christ did. So that was quite an experience for them to see Him ascend into heaven. But the angel said to them, and the Lord confirmed it, there is going to be power coming upon you. And that power is what you absolutely need. And without that power, you cannot go forth and be my witnesses. Now our words today are truthful words. And the words that are preached from the Bible are very, very truthful. And you can be very sincere in your life trying to live for the Lord and testify and minister to other people. But there is something about a Christian that is different from this world and there is something that He's given His church that is altogether different than what this world has. If all we taught was morality, the world can teach morality. If all the church was here for was to give ethical teaching, the world can do that. If the church was here to make better families, the world can do that. Right. If the church was only here to show civilization how to be civilized, friend, the world can do that. But what God has given the church is something far above and beyond and greater than anything that can originate from this world. For what happened to them in Acts chapter number 2 did not come from this world. What happened in Acts chapter number 2 came from above. It came as the promise of the Father and it came in due time until they had been born again, born of the Spirit, till the Holy Ghost had come upon them and separated them from this flesh until the miraculous power of God had made children and sons of God out of them. This baptism could not have taken place in Acts chapter number 2. This baptism of the Holy Ghost is the day of the birthing of the church of God. It is the day that it began to breathe. It's the day that life was infused within its very soul. This baptism of the Holy Ghost in Acts chapter number 2 was when it was marked out and separated entirely from this world. For its identity did not arise from the earth its identity had come down from above. What made them what they were was an act of God. It was an act of God sent by the power of the Holy Ghost of God. The Holy Ghost of God is not to be understood so much as a person or an influence, but the Holy Ghost of God is to be understood as the power of Almighty God Himself working in the heart and soul of the believer. It's the identity of God. It's the breath of God. It's the person of God. It's it's the soul of God. It's the voice of God. It's the presence of God. The Holy Ghost makes all the difference for He's the very life blood of God Himself. He's the living, breathing God infused within the soul of a man. And so when the Holy Ghost came down in Acts chapter number 2, He took people who were believers and indeed they were believers but it transformed them into sons of God at that very moment they had become sons of God at that moment they had the very life of God dwelling within them at that moment they became immortal, eternal at that moment death could never touch them at that moment they were from everlasting to everlasting for the life of God was now in their soul and that's what he offers to us today he doesn't offer you ethical training he doesn't offer you an idea. He doesn't give you a purpose. It's not about some kind of a thing to join up with. It's the very life of God that He offers you. And that life of God my friend can only come from above. And so He said tarry in Jerusalem. There's a time to wait on God. There's a time to wait for the Father. There's a time to wait for the promise. There's a time that God doesn't get in a hurry. You won't hurry Him up. He's not interested in your time clock. I'm talking about 
one that has a day is a thousand years, and a thousand years is a day. He gets in no hurry. Why does he get in no hurry, preacher? Because he worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. He's still God. He's still the Almighty. Nothing's changed about that. And he still saves. And when salvation comes upon a sinner, he can only from that moment on shout and praise God for something has come from above and touched him from far beyond this old world. He has something placed within him that burns from that day on. There's a light that comes on that will never be put out. There's a life that begins to live that can never die. Hallelujah! I'm talking about the new birth. I'm talking about salvation. I'm talking about being born again. He said, carry in Jerusalem. Don't take your ideas out. Don't take empty words out to men. But carry the power of the living God. And that's what we have today. Nothing's changed. He's the same God yesterday, today, and forever. He always has been. He always will be. He doesn't draw His identity from you. You get your identity from Him. He doesn't live because of His creation. His creation lives because of Him. I'm talking about an eternal one. And He changes not. Therefore, your sons of Israel are not consumed. He changes not. The same God yesterday, today, and forever. I believe in the same miracle yesterday, today, and forever. I believe in the same power yesterday, today, and forever. I believe in the same spirit yesterday, today, and forever. I believe in the power of the blood, the same yesterday, today, and forever. I believe in the power of the cross yesterday, today, and forever. Hallelujah to God. The God that I believe in is not some weakling that I've got to prop up, that I've got to hold up. I don't need to hold him up. I don't need to do anything with Him but preach the Word. That Word will do the job. It's a sharp two-edged sword. It's a hammer. It's fire. It'll reach to the soul of a man. It talks to you the way that I can't talk to you. But He said, you yeah, will receive power. We need that power. I pray for that power. I hunger for that power. I cry for that power. I pray for that power more than anything. You can get a head full of knowledge and no power. And all all you'll do is impress people with nothing. But you get the power. And the power of God will save men. He'll change men. He'll change this world. Amen. Acts 1 is a remarkable thing. My friend, it's a transition. How it must have been for the first time to watch one ascend into glory. I know how I'd been. I'd been saying, how can I come behind you? Would you just take me up now too? I'd just like for you to carry me on into glory with you. Well, he said, this same Jesus, this same Jesus, this same Jesus, not another, not an angel, this same Jesus that is taken up from you will come again in like manner that's the blessed hope that's what stirs the soul that's what feeds the heart it's the fact that he comes again he said in John 14 I will come again I will come again I will come again and the last prayer in the Bible the last praise in the Bible the last desire in the word of God from the last of the apostles the last one alive and of all the twelve Old John was all that was left. And the last thing John said is even so come. Even so come. Even so come. Hallelujah to God. That's the answer. He's the answer. He's the reason. He's what life's about. He's my soul. He's my glory to God. He's my life. Hallelujah. Amen. Woo! Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Oh, if you knew the dark hole God brought me out of. Oh, if you could just see where I used to be. I'm not anymore. I'll sit with kings. I'll sit with queens. I'll walk in a palace. I'll sit at a table. I'll eat the king's food. I'll walk among cherubim. I'll shout with a seraphim. I'll be with the angels. I've been saved. I've been saved. I've been saved. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you. Bye. Woo! 
my! <laughs> oh! <laughs> Ma! <laughs> Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Brother, if you'd be up here while I'm standing right now, I can't hack much of this. Oh, oh there's something here. <laughs> There's something stronger and greater than I am up here right now. And it's the power of God. He knows I believe that power. He knows I want to receive that power. He knows that this preacher knows that I can't do anything without the power of God. I know that, friend. I preach that to you. Without the power of God, we're dead. We're nothing. We're empty. We're nothing but a loud profession without a possession. He said, you shall receive power. Old Pete was gathered around there with him. Old Peter was there that day. Old Peter, I'm sure, was still thinking about that night he betrayed him. I'm sure the devil wore him out good with it. Even though the Lord on his death resurrection born said, go tell the disciples and Peter. Find him. He may not be with them. He may be alone on the side of a hill somewhere. Peter may be hiding. Search him out. Find him. Whoa! You go tell Peter. Make sure you tell Peter. Hallelujah to God. Yeah, you hear that? Is there any flicker in your soul? Is there the least bit of light in your heart? Hey, man, why don't you act on that right now? Go tell the disciples and Peter that I'm alive. I'm alive. That's all you got to tell him. Tell him I'm alive. Tell him I'm alive. Tell him I'm alive. Amen. Amen. I can see him as they find old Pete. He's on the back side of a hill somewhere. And he's down there on his face. He's crying out to God. He's saying, Lord, I can't believe I did it. You told me I wouldn't. I never thought I would. But I did it. I backslid on you. I denied you. I went away from you. Whoa! I had no idea how powerful the devil was. He sifted me. Yeah, he did. Oh, Lord God. And about that time, he hears a voice come across the hill. Hey, Pete. What? Don't bother me. I deny. Hey, hey. Hey, he's alive, Peter. What? He's alive. Why are you sure? He's alive. Are you sure? He's alive, Peter. And then the next thing he says, and this must have been the sweetest words he ever heard in his life. And he said to tell you, you, Peter, you, Peter, me, you, Peter. He wants you, Peter. He wants you, glory to God. Whoa, man. He said, tell you, Peter, that I'm alive. Amen. Amen. Me, me. There's got to be more to him than I ever thought there was. Oh, he's a greater God than I ever figured. I had him all figured out. He's bigger than that. You mean to tell me he's already forgiven me for what I did to him? He's forgiven you, Peter. He wants to see you. Tell him. Tell him. Make sure you tell Peter. What if he's drunk? Sober him up and tell him. What if he's running? Stop him and tell him that I'm alive. You see, my friend, it all rises or falls upon your relationship and understanding of Jesus Christ. I'm about dead. Oh, my, I never had an idea. Soul. I never thought for a minute I was going to preach like that. Lord, physically I wasn't capable of that. But I give the glory to more this morning. I bless your holy name. You never have failed me. You told me who you were. Oh, glory to God. You told me what you're going to do. And you did it. Whoa! Thank you.
so scary on me. Faster than the words can come. Oh, glory. Oh, glory. Blessed God. Blessed God. Woo! Oh, Lord. Glory in here this morning. Get glory, Lord. They know I'm nothing but a piece of flesh. God, they know that's not of me. It can't be of me. Get glory, Holy One. Receive glory, Holy One. And I bless you, sweet Holy Name. I'll bless you. And I'll preach you till I die. I'll preach your word. As long as there's breath in this body. Blessed God, blessed God, blessed God. I bless your holy name. Oh, oh you've been good to me. Oh, oh, what a God. Oh, what a God we serve. My, whoa. Oh, there's power. There's power, there's power, there's power. Yeah, there's power. See, I can't break the sin that besets me. Oh, you don't have to break it. The power of God can break it. There's power, there's power, there's power. There's power. See, I can't heal my body. Yeah, but He can. I can't get delivered from this. He can deliver you. Listen, friend. I don't categorize God and put Him in a box and put Him in Theology 101. I stand back and look at Him and I say, You're the Almighty. You can do anything you please at any time you please, any way you please, and nobody can stay your hand. He's the Almighty. He can do anything today He did then. Far above and beyond all that you could ask or think. He's the Almighty. See, preacher, that's a challenge. Yeah, it is. It's a challenge to try Him, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And I'm not going to tell you how to try Him, but I'm going to challenge you to try Him. In the book of Malachi, he said, try me, prove me, and I challenge you, hey, man, I've done it. <laughs> you know what happens to me when I do it? I wind up down here because he proves himself. <laughs> man, boy, I have no idea God's going to do that. Boy. Man, I couldn't stand still, brother. It's just, it's just, it's just, it's just, it's just got a hold of you. That's the power of God. You bring that baby to the Lord. Hallelujah to God. Ha! This is good. Be here this morning. 
Woo. <laughs> Boy. <laughs> I wasn't feeling like shouting when I was sitting over here. <laughs> there, wasn't, there wasn't any great joy flooding up in my soul or power moving on my heart. <laughs> but the more I stood here, the more the power came. And I will not deny His power. <laughs> we all need that. He didn't do that because I deserve that. He did that because I'm a big mouth and He wants to use my big mouth to preach through this morning. And He used it. Amen. Glory to God. Now mouth needs to shut up and let God do what He wants to do. Where's Brother Yates? Come up and lead us in a song, brother. We've already had people coming up here, but maybe you're a little reluctant, a little shy, a little holding back a little bit. Don't be afraid of the Lord. If you ever had a friend that's Him, He even tells you He's the friend of sinners. Now His enemies called Him that, but they get it right every once in a while. A friend of sinners. You never did hear Him rebuke anybody for saying that, did you? No. Friend of sinners. <laughs> Stand up. All right, brother. We'll get you right here in a minute, okay, brother? Be glad to. Let's go ahead and sing, brother. Page 364 in the All-American.